This is a video tutorial on how to build the little book of horror. This is it right here. This is a book box that I got at Michael's. It's made by Punch Studios. Uh, it's their number 10808. It's a four and a half by about uh, seven inches um, long. It comes with a, a lid that is magnetically closed, uh, which we don't want. We need to remove that. You do that by Kind of pushing down right here to see where the magnet is connected. It appears it's right here. You want to cut that out and try to save this little piece so you can match it back to the box. So much for that blade. Sometimes it's just glued too well to get off. If that's the case, just forego saving that part. Get the magnet out of there. And then you can actually fill that in if you want with something. Now that now the lid is not attached to the originally the magnet attached to a hidden piece of metal in the lid. You don't need to remove that, just, just the magnet. Don't let the children have this. They're dangerous. <clears throat> the book essentially needs three modifications. The first was to remove that magnet. The second is to drill a hole for this eyeball here. That hole is a 13 16 inch hole and the eyeball itself is a 20 millimeter eye. Um, you want to measure down. If, if we use this as the reference, this corner right here as the reference, you want to measure down one and a quarter inches and let's make a light mark on it. Actually, you're going to cover this up so it doesn't matter if you make big marks on it. So one and a quarter down and seven eighths of an inch over. So our eye will actually go right there on this box. We'll drill that in a minute. The next thing is to um, cut a slot in the bottom. Measure about in the middle here and go over three-eighths of an inch on each side of that which will give you a three-quarter inch slot I'm also going to leave about three-eighths of an inch or so here and maybe a quarter of an inch here That'll give us enough room for that two inch propeller blade, which is right here, to go down through there. And take a fairly good razor knife, cut down through there. You want to cut this completely out. This is fairly thick cardboard, so it's not easy that to cut.
Don't worry about it tearing out on the back side. We're going to cover that anyway with a piece of paper. Clean that up the best you can. Okay, now we've got a slot in the bottom, and I'm going to go drill this hole. Okay, the box is modified. We've got the slot in the bottom. We've got the hole in the top. We've got the magnet out. That's all the modifications to the box that needs to be made other than its covering. This is an 8.5 by 11 sheet of craft paper which is just the right size to cover this book. What we want to do is a really crinkle this thing up to make the uh, book look old on the outside and end up looking like this. You want to do that about three times. Crinkle it up, open it up, crinkle it again. If you happen to accidentally tear it, don't worry about that. It'll make it look even more old and authentic. Now I'm going to take this in and spray it with spray adhesive. And uh, we'll stick it to the book then. This is the stuff that I just sprayed the back with. Super 77. I like it because it gives me about five to ten minutes to do my thing before it dries. Okay, you can see how wrinkled the book cover looks now. And you want to cut this. So this will lay in here like this, and then I usually have to clean my scissors with acetone after this procedure. Some of the glue sticks on them. Almost done. There. Now we have a nice old looking book cover case. The next thing to do is to paint it. And uh, I use two different colors of paint. Um, burnt umber 
It's a nice old looking brown and yellow ochre, or however you say that. It's kind of a dirty yellow. Um, I use a dry paintbrush to do this because if you put it on wet it'll just go down into the valleys of the wrinkles and it won't look that good. I'll show the technique here in a second. Okay, so you get a little paint on the paintbrush and then kind of dry it off a little bit before you lightly go over it this way. You want to leave the valleys the light color of brown. The yellow doesn't seem to do much at very first, but uh, once you get the brown on it, it makes it really look cool. The bottom you don't have to be very careful on. People aren't usually going to see that anyway, but I always do it anyway. Okay, once you get the yellow on, I get a little brown going here. This, you want to go in one direction only. That way you can still see the yellow on the back side. It's better to get it too light at first than too dark. You can always go back over it. See, I got a little bit too much right here. That's okay, it looked like it got dirty there. Once again, this is the bottom. Now it's a good idea just to set this aside and let it dry for a little while. 